Hey, it's Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. It's another paid request. This time for Anthony. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Tetsuo 2, the body hammer from 1992. And he mentioned in the message, just on PayPal, you can also send a message along with it. Wanted to hear my thoughts since I reviewed the first Tetsuo. Now, the first Tetsuo I was not a fan of. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't know, none of this made sense. And it was like, was that a penis drill or whatever the hell it was? But it was like to her to him. And like, what the hell is going on? I mean, I still don't know what the hell is going on in this movie. But it is a bit more refined because there is a bigger budget. Um. It's less strange than the first one. I guess there's a little bit more of a plot, to, to be fair. So I guess I would say I like this more. Pretty much, it's a sequel, but it has nothing to do with the first one in terms of some of the same actors return. But it doesn't follow the ending of the first film. But the first film ended, and it's like, what's going on? No, it's like the first film didn't happen. So it's a sequel, but it's like a remake. So it's almost like they're kind of doing the Evil Dead 2 thing, in a way. At least in Evil Dead 2, if you take out the first five minutes, you could look at it as a sequel. Here, there's really no way to look at this as an actual sequel, because if you know the way the first Tetsuo ended, you know why. And for those who didn't, spoiler for Tetsuo 1. Because, like, the the wife was dead and the two had merged into this thing. And they're just going around as if they're going to take over the world. And none of that's here. So, it starts with a guy with a metal heart shooting another guy with his finger. And that guy we see much later on in the film. Then it cuts to our lead guy, who has a wife and a kid, and these two Asian skinheads kidnap the son, or attempt to, because the mom and dad do get the kid back, but throughout this, it seems as if they want to invoke the father to some rage, I guess, to open up some inner being within our lead character. And he's able to get a bit stronger. He's able to work out better. And so they get his kid again. And he gets more angry as he's chasing around them in a foot chase. Ultimately his arm starts to turn to a cannon. And he tries to shoot but the bad guys pull the son in front of them the last minute. He can't stop it. The next thing you know... There's a blast, and then the bad guy's holding little baby arms, kid arms, because that's all that's left of the kid, is these little kid arms. So, of course, the father's horrified, the mother's horrified. One thing leads to another, the, the father gets caught, is tied up, this contraption's put on his head like something from Videodrome, and he's experimented on. So the guy from the beginning is there, who's our main bad guy. The the scientist is there. I'm on this group of... It's a cult of Asian skinheads who like to work out in boiler rooms. I guess the deal is they all look to the bad guy hoping to get his gift and be gods themselves. And some of them, they can transform and have cannon arms and things of that nature. Where a lead guy is being experimented on, but all these cannons are created on his chest, and he shoots and kills one guy. Then there's a point that him and this guy with a cannon arm are fighting, and he's able to kill that guy. And I mean, it sounds weird and kooky and maybe even neat, and a lot of it's done practical. And it's a little bit more refined from the first film because of the bigger budget. But at the same time, the action scenes don't really have much in terms of choreography and staging to really stand out. 
compared to many upon many action films because this director doesn't really know how to shoot action. He may have crazy ideas, <clears throat> and there are times he has, as I call the Colteen fly cinematography, as in if a fly, if you put a camera on him and you inject him with a shitload of Colteen, <laughs> so sometimes there's that that happens. But I mean, in terms of like action, staging, I mean, he ain't no John Woo, and he ain't no Rennie Harlan, he ain't no John McTiernan, in terms of action. And maybe that could have helped in matters in some of these action bits, because a lot of times it's like, ah, uh, you know, the lead guy streaming as these cannons are shooting, and cut to the guy who has, the first guy has his sort of metal shield thing on his chest and stomach, but then it's hitting other stuff, it's getting through, and he also really gets shot up. And while there is blood, there's not like insane gore. It's not like heads getting blown up, and it's not insanely gory movie. So maybe if you're expecting a lot of like big gore, you'd be disappointed. Yeah, it is in color compared to the original's black and white. In a way, making it in color, I, I can appreciate, but. Sometimes makes some of the effects look cheaper than maybe stuff in the original where <coughs> when the the lead guy is fully turning much more into Metal Man or however you want to put it. The, okay, this is what I wrote down. It's like if the Tin Man was melted and reformed or if that last bit in T-1000 when it's being melted is this amalgamation. If you made that out of Power Rangers material, it looks fucking ridiculous. Like he's going on in this fake looking suit where you see like one eye and his teeth and this is like pointed into this and like blotty, chunky asses. It just... It looked fucking awful. It looked silly. It looked ridiculous. It looked goofy. It, it looked like a shitty Power Rangers villain, in my opinion. Like a Power Rangers villain that they haven't finished building the suit yet. That's just me and the way I took it. And that's just me. But I'm sitting going, what the fuck's going on here? So, as it happens... I don't know. At one point, the wife gets kidnapped, and he thinks the wife is dead, and that's how he fully turns, but his wife isn't dead. And then him and the, the bad guy have a fight. But it's more of, you think a fight, you think maybe some choreography where they go back and forth and shooting and ducking and dodging. No. It's pretty much one with his mind metal powers is pushing the lead into this thing to be crushed but then he's able to do his mind thing and get out and the other guy comes in ready to get crushed and uh, I didn't really think it was that exciting of an action set piece this type of a guy that I've seen so many other low budget films Nemesis with Oliver Gruner Automatic with Oliver Gruner uh, I'm just talking about like sci-fi stuff you know, Equilibrium like it just it just didn't impress me. Even the okay, horror, that uh, Asian, e the, the Japanese Evil Dead, uh, bl bloody body muscle from hell or something? Or bodybuilder from hell? I forget what the fuck it's called. I got the movie over there. Bloody bodybuilder from hell. Some I can't remember. Let me see if I could just grab the movie. <laughs> I got it over here. I know I got over here. Here we go. There we go. This. Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. Like, this seemed more gory and more crazy than the movie I saw. And I think this had a much smaller budget. But, uh, there you go. Bloody muscle bodybuilding hell. Like this, I thought was more fun and worthwhile than the movie I saw. 
Now, when I say it has a bit more of a story, there's a little bit backstory where apparently the two, the lead and the bad guy, are were brothers. And back in the day, their dad wanted to do experiments, but at the same time, is I'm still not 100% sure how these experiments worked, but you see these kids training with a gun, and then the gun goes in them and kind of forms. And then the father wanted them to, to shoot an animal, and one left, but the other did shoot. And spoiler alert, it came to a point where the father was messing with their mother, and even put a gun in her mouth, and then shot her. And one of the sons, of course, were pissed about that, and they were able to form a gun cannon and killed the dad. Uh, I guess maybe it's supposed to be some metaphor for trauma and over trying to not let trauma overtake you, but I think a lot of this diluted because not only this director is as good in showcasing those metaphors compared to other directors, I just don't. And there's not really any big confrontation or anything if you're wondering there's uh stuff going on outside and it's pretty thin walls but there's stuff going on outside because of that if you're wondering what the hell's that noise i'm being robbed actually i'm being robbed right now but i decided to just keep doing this review just because <laughs> um it'd be funny for youtube i'm being robbed right now no i'm just kidding but it, it's just stuff being done outside but it's one of those things where It shows the backstory, but then one thing leads to another, and the two, I just decide to merge, and then these tables come out, and they attach to all the agent skinheads, and then, uh, and then everybody merges into this weird tank. Because the, the lead guy tells his wife, please inject that and kill us, kill me. And she's like, no, I don't want to kill you. And then they merge with all the Asian skinheads who are not busy working out in the boiler room right now. And then this like tank with faces on it and it's going down a road. And the wife is just hanging on to the side. I don't know what the fuck she's going to do, but she, I guess... I got nothing else to do. I'll just hang on the side of this fucking tank. And then the next thing you know is the whole city's destroyed. The guy, the lead is normal. The wife is there. The kid is alive. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to represent. Why is the kid alive now? The, the guy got back to normal. The wife is like, oh, at least it's peaceful now since the city's destroyed. And then that cocaine fly on the wall, you know, I don't know what it's trying to do. I really don't get these movies. I don't get the Tetsuo movies. I would say this is more easy to watch compared with the first one, again, because it's calmed down a little bit, and there's a little bit more budget to finesse some things, and there's a little bit more of a story, a little bit more. But it's, it still fucking confuses me. I don't know what the fuck the ending's supposed to be. There's not really a big battle between the good guy and the bad guy. The action set pieces are not really that satisfying to watch. Maybe just some, you know, fun little details. But, I mean, fuck, anime films have done that better. Where you see people form and other stuff and shoot stuff. I mean, you'd watch Akira. It did more of a satisfying experience watching Akira among other movies and I guess sometimes the the effects idea yeah, like the lead guy when he's transformed at that point looks ridiculous and silly and I, I guess at the end of the day I'm like this is just not my kind of movie I don't get these movies I don't understand these movies but at least there's a lot less pegging where she is fucking him in the ass Yes, there's less of that, so uh, I can appreciate that more with this. For people out there that get mad and say, I don't get it, okay, fine. Then explain me in the comments. I would love to read it. I would love to read it. I sincerely would. I'm not being a wise-ass or sarcastic. I would love to read it. I just don't get the movie. I just didn't find it that entertaining. Um, the characters, I still don't really care a whole lot about. 
I mean, maybe a little bit more compared with the first because at least, you know, hey, they got a kid and I feel bad for them because what happened to the kid? And, but then, is the, the final bit not supposed to mean anything or is it supposed to be some symbolism of whatever the hell it may be or it's not really... I don't know what it's supposed to be. I really don't. I really don't. Yeah, it was kind of cool to see the multiple chest cannons and they fire... But it's like, I was kind of hoping that he would go on a rampage and go like a Paul Kersey death wish where he would fight all the skinhead Asian cult members in their boiler room and he would just have this chest cannon and, and people would get blown their arms off, their legs off, their heads off. It's like, then shoot it, like, he's, if the movie was him trying to save his wife because he doesn't want his wife to die like his son died, he wants revenge to what happened to his son wants revenge on these guys, and these guys have maybe, they have an arm cannon, or they have this cannon, but then this guy has a chest cannon, is it just going to town Rambo style? I guess that's more my kind of movie, and that's the more movie I would have wanted to see, but that's not the movie the director wanted to make, so the action scenes just come off as, eh, or maybe the, again, the ch chest cannon kind of a cool moment, that's kind of a cool moment, but it just, like I said, it's not really, the depth of characters is a little bit of the backstory, and I still, I don't even know what the hell the bad guy wants. Does he want to rule the world just because what happened when he was a kid? Does he want to just be happy with his brother? Does he, I still don't deal what the bad guy wants, honestly. And... I said the the ending final bits. I don't get it. Was the city destroyed by this? I, I maybe I'm thinking too literal, and that's the problem. I'm not supposed to think of this in such a literal fashion. But this is. I guess this movie just wasn't for me. You know, if I want weird Asian, uh, I'll stick with this movie. Let's stick with this movie instead. Among other ones. So, there you go. With that said, thanks for watching. Thanks once again, Anthony. We'll see you later, man. Bye bye.